they have raised four fabulous children. Please give a wondrous warrior welcome to Pastor Art as he comes to the podium. Students, administrators, parents, family, friends, thank you for having me here today. Six years ago, to this day, I stood to talk to the student body about what it means to be a veteran. And like then and today, I am truly humbled and honored by the opportunity to speak to them about who we are. Veterans Day is a special holiday, so forgive me, this is a school I'm going to give a quick history lesson. All of us who have served in the military, all of us who have worn the uniforms of our country, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. Oh, by the way, you know, I want to let you know, I, today I met one of three Coast Guardsmen in Central Texas. He was the only one to stand for his service flag. God bless you, Coastie. World War I was fought by many countries, including the United States. We fought in that war from 1917 to 1918. But in 1918, at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, 11 o'clock, November 11th, 1918, the warring countries ceased war. And they signed an agreement called an armistice. People at the time very wishfully thought that there would be no more wars. I wish that had been a prayer that was answered on that day. In fact, World War I was nicknamed the war to end all wars. United States President Woodrow Wilson at the time made November 11th a national holiday called Armistice Day and it was designed to honor the dead of that war. But years later over time it became known as Veterans Day and his very purpose was to honor all who have served and are currently serving in the United States Armed Forces. Not all veterans have been to war or in a war zone, but many of us, like myself, have served in a war in a foreign country. And all veterans, every one of us, regardless of where we're stationed, are at war when our country has declared it. Because of my military training and job description, I spent almost half of my 20 years of active duty service deployed somewhere other than home. In those years, I served stateside, deployed to Latin America, Germany, Spain, North Africa, the former Soviet republics. I spent two years in Bosnia-Herzegovina as a peacekeeper and frankly, other foreign countries that I shouldn't mention. And I have to tell you, to the students who are here, we veterans know that the worst part wasn't war. It wasn't the possibility of war itself. Even though war is frightening and dangerous, any veteran can tell you, any one of us, that the worst part is being away from home. I'm sure every veteran and veteran's family can relate to that, having experienced it themselves. Right now, as we gather here today in the stadium, thousands of soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guardsmen are on the job around the world protecting America. As a military veteran, my thoughts go out to the thousands of those military men and women some who are not too much older than these students who are deployed around the world, around the clock, protecting and defending America on the world's lands, oceans, and seas. The Department of Defense reported yesterday that over 200,000 active troops from all services are overseas in 177 countries today. They are out there so our enemies can never get here. 
These sailors on ships, submarines, aircraft, on every ocean in the world, soldiers on the ground in Afghanistan, in Poland, Marines out at sea and on the ground in Afghanistan. There are airmen patrolling the skies from the Middle East to the United States, alert for any danger. Coast Guardmen are patrolling our national waters in every sort of weather. They will be there when we're asleep tonight. They will be there every Saturday, every Sunday, every holiday of this year and years to come. And they'll be missing their families, their friends, and their loved ones back home. Many are working here with us stateside in base operations and military installations that never close, never. Many are in harm's way, but no one is hidden from God. I'm often asked by the ignorant and the unknowing, why do you think the veterans deserve so much? Why should they deserve our honor? They ask me, what's the big deal? It's just a job. Yeah, it's a dangerous one, but it's just a job with benefits. And I tell them, no, it's not a job. I like to ask them this in return. If it was such a great job with benefits, why didn't you do it? <laughs> One reason is because the causes to which a veteran is committed. A veteran is committed to the cause of freedom. A veteran is committed to the cause of loyalty through selfless service. A veteran is committed to the love of their country. Long after the veteran has laid aside his or her uniform, put the medals away, they remain the most patriotic, loyal, most committed Americans today in this country. And for that commitment to that kind of cause that is greater than themselves, they deserve your honor. Another reason our veterans are so deserving is because the cost the veteran is willing to pay. The veteran gives up the safety and security of their homes. They reluctantly but willingly left behind family and friends. All of us surrendered our personal plans and dreams of civilian education and career. And all of us suffered harm. Some have lost their sight, their arms, their legs. Some have been permanently scarred by the realistic training that is required of us and some from the ravages that are inevitable when you're in harm's way. Many of us are still suffering. The Veterans Administration reports that between 1979 and 2014, an average of 20 veterans a day have committed suicide. And that trend has not abated. Some came home, but some never came back. Many of us suffered their very lives. And others will be haunted by the nightmarish images of war for the rest of our lives. For these great costs they have paid, our veterans are deserving of not just your appreciation, but your honor. As a pastor, I love in scripture seeing that soldiers had a special place in the gospel. A centurion is a veteran soldier in Rome who commanded a 100-man combat unit. And every time a centurion is mentioned in the New Testament, it's always in a favorable light. In Acts 10 and 1, the first Gentile convert mentioned by name in the scripture was a centurion by the name of Cornelius. In Acts 21, we read where some soldiers, including centurions, were the ones who rescued Paul from being killed by an angry mob in Jerusalem. In Acts 23, we read that it was some centurions and a band of more than 200 soldiers who provided Paul 
with a military escort to Caesarea, where he was brought before Felix, the governor. In Acts 27, when Paul and a group of prisoners were taken to Rome, their ship wrecked on the Isle of Malta, the soldiers who were escorting them wanted to kill them all to keep them from escaping. But a centurion aboard that ship ordered them not to do it because he wanted to spare Paul's life. Jesus himself pays no greater honor to a military veteran, not because of his service to the country, but to his faith in God. In Matthew 8, a centurion asked for the healing of his servant and told Jesus, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but I only speak the word and my servant will be healed. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who were with him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not seen such great faith, not even in Israel. Lastly, in the book of Mark, chapter 27, when Jesus died on the cross for us, it was a centurion who said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. I believe there's a special place in the heart of God for a veteran. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a veteran, if you have served or are serving now in honor of your country, would you please stand? something a little different. If you are a family member of someone serving in the military, if your mother, father, brother, or sister, aunt, uncle, grandfather, grandmother served in the United States Armed Forces, would you please stand? Two. Yes, you may have served here. You fought the home front, but we honor you as well. And I salute you. To my brother and sister veterans here today, do me a favor. Do us a favor. Share your story with others. Let people know that you've done so that they can see the many faces of military service and appreciate the personal sacrificial service of their neighbors and their families. Tell them not because you know your country's history. Tell them because you lived that history. You're a part of the great story that is the United States of America. Tell these children the truth of your service to our country before someone who has never been there, someone who has never served, someone who has never worn the uniform, gives them a watered down, convenient history that they will believe. If you'll allow me a personal story. Years ago, I had to help a family bury their father. He was ill, member of the church. I'd seen him a couple of times at events and he ushered for a while. He was looking into his 80s when I met him. He, the family's asked me not to tell you his name, but Mr. K was an amazing guy. And I got to be with him the days before he passed into glory. One day when I was with him, they had to do a procedure in his room and I couldn't be in there. So I stepped out into the hallway and I was standing there waiting and right in front of me, I had never noticed it before, was an interesting flag that was in a little brown frame. It wasn't any bigger than a piece of paper, 
but it had a flag of the Chinese Republic of World War II, and it had Chinese writing below it. And because I knew my history, I knew what that was. It's known as a blood chip, C-H-I-T. And Air Force pilots sewed them on the insides of their jackets when they flew in China and in India and in Burma. If they were shot down, this silk piece of cloth written in their jacket said, this is an American. He is here to fight with us. You are respectfully requested to give him shelter and help bring him back to his unit. And I instantly assumed, but I had to know, when I walked in to his office and said, hey, Mr. K, and asked you a question? I said, sure. I said, are you a flying tiger? He said, shh, don't tell nobody. For the students who may not know, but there was a time where China was our ally. The Japanese has invaded China, and we couldn't help the Chinese. We couldn't get supplies to them. Roads were too long. They, the, the front was in the Himalayan mountains. So a group of pilots formed the Flying Tigers. And every day, day and night, they flew cargo planes 34,000 feet over the Himalayas. 150 1,500 of those pilots joined. 800 came home. They flew in the dark. They flew in the storms, in planes that were not designed to go over 20,000 feet, but they flew beyond that to save our allies. Their two principal things they carried was gas and medical supplies. And this man from our church was one of the last 12 remaining flying tigers. And I said, I'm going to honor you on your burial day. He said, yeah, but don't overdo it. It was just my job. <laughs> Typical vet. <clears throat> on that day that I buried that hero, his four children came up to me. I said, I never knew my dad did that. I just thought he was a cargo pilot, hauling around junk. I went, no, sir. He saved a nation. He saved a nation. He was a hero. It hurts my heart today because that story should have been told in his home, on the news, in our church, in our schools. There are heroes among you who have done things You'll never know unless you tell them. I wanted to tell you also as I close, something occurred to me when I was praying about speaking here today. God impressed on my heart, this old soldier's heart, to tell somebody, don't be afraid of this dark year. Amidst COVID, wars and the rumors of war, a seemingly contested, still contested national election, a country seemingly so divided that it seems our very future is in peril. Amidst all this and more, there is a special kind of American who still serves selflessly, who still stands ready to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. An American who stands for every other fellow American, even the unborn. These Americans will stand with the ones who love and fear God and stand with those who have yet to meet Him. That American stands with the downtrodden, the immigrant trying to legally be grafted into the American dream, the neighbor pursuing life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness regardless of their race, their color, their creed, or political persuasion. As long as the veteran is held in honor in America, there will always be a firm foundation of loyalty 
and a banner of hope for our country. There will be always a great stone wall of hearts dedicated to the godly ideas of our founding fathers because of those of us who willingly gave our time, our service, and even our lives that the ideals of our great nation, America, must not fear. We must persevere. We veterans are watchmen on the walls of this nation. I am a soldier. I serve my country, and I serve you. This is who I am. This is who we are. I serve God, honor my country, my family, my church, and this school. This is how every veteran is and can only be. Thank you, Cornerstone. Thank you, students, for honoring these veterans today. Listen to their stories. Learn their lessons. God bless our veterans. God bless all those in harm's way. God bless Cornerstone Christian School. And may God continue to bless America. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Art.